nine delegates, three each from three different countries, randomly select chairs at a round table that sits nine people. Let the probability that each delegate sits next to at least one delegate from another country, make sure you pay attention to this, it's not the same country, be m over n, where m and n are relatively prime positive integers. Find m plus n. So we have this round table consisting of nine chairs, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and nine delegates are going to be sitting on top of these chairs, one person per chair, and just for simplicity, just to make this easier to talk about, let's say country one is A, so we have the first country A, second country B, and the third country C. We have three different countries, and for each of them, we have three people. So let's label them A sub 1, A sub 2, A sub 3. So these are the delegates from country A, then B sub 1, B sub 2, B sub 3, and finally C sub 1, C sub 2, then C sub 3. So what do we want to do? We want to make sure that each delegate has at least one delegate from another country adjacent to him or her. So for example, if A sub 1 sits right there, we want to make sure at least one of these spots is inhabited by B or C. But trying to count it this way is going to be really messy and it's going to take a long time. Because for every single person, we can have so many different combinations. We can have B1, C1, or we can even have A2, C1, or A2, B1. And of course, that can be flipped. And you gotta make sure the same condition applies for every single chair. And to me, that sounds like a nightmare. I simply do not want to do this by direct counting. But looking at the question, it seems like if we are using complementary counting, if we do counting by complement, if we do complementary counting, it's going to be so much easier. So we are going to try to find the arrangements that we do not want and simply take that away from total number of arrangements to get the arrangements that we want. So classic complementary counting. And in this case, what's going to be complement of each delegate sitting next to at least one delegate from another country? Well, that's simply going to be probability that all A's are together. So A sub 1, A sub 2, and A sub 3 are together. All A's are together or that all B's are together, so all B's are together, or all C's are together. And hopefully this makes sense, because if A sub 1, A sub 2, and A sub 3 are next to each other, there is no possible way that we are going to have every single delegate sitting next to at least one delegate from another country, because if A sub 1 and A sub 2 and A sub 3 are together, then the middle A is going to be sandwiched in between the delegates of the same country, namely A. So middle A is not sitting next to one delegate from another country. So we are getting an arrangement that we do not want. So this makes sense. Either this happens, or this happens, or this happens, or they can happen in some conjunction. And we know how to count this using principle of inclusion and exclusion, or pi, principle of inclusion, inclusion, and exclusion. And the chances are, if you're trying out number 12 counting question on Amy, you really should know basics of pi before attempting this question. So I'm going to assume that you know this by heart and just apply it. And using principle of inclusion and exclusion, and using the symmetry of the problem, we know this is the same thing as three times a probability that all A's are together, minus three times the probability that all A's are together and all B's are together, and plus one times probability that all A's are together and all B's are together and all C's are together. And this is just coming from direct application of pi. We know probability that all A's are together and the probability that all B's are together and the probability that all C's are together are going to be the same by the symmetry of the problem. So we can simply multiply that by 3, and in this case, A and B, B and C, A and C are going to have the same probability, so you multiply this by 3, and finally, all A, all B, and all C, there's only one possible way, so 1 times this. 
So now all we have to do is find each of the probabilities and we cannot forget because we are finding the probability using complementary counting whatever answer we get. So whatever answer we get from this, we have to do one minus this. We have to do one minus the answer we got to get our final answer. Keeping that in mind, let's actually get started. And whenever I have a complicated counting question in a circular table, what I like to do is to change the circle to a line by splitting it up, starting on some spot. And how we are going to do it, we are always going to put a sub 1 on the first chair. But realize we are still counting every single possible arrangement because whenever you're arranging something in a circle, any arrangements that differ only by the rotation of the table are counted once. So whatever arrangement you have, you can always rotate it so that you have a sub 1 in the first seat, so to say. So we, we are considering this to be the first seat, that's second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth. So we are really having a line, a circular shaped line. And this is going to make our life much easier. Anyway, now let's actually count it. First of all, what's the probability that all A's are together? Well, let's go back up. We can either have the group of A like this, or like this, or finally, finally like this. So there are three different choices on how to put that group. So there's three times inside the group, we gotta decide where to put a sub 2 and a sub 3. a sub 1 is already set, so we have to multiply this by 2. And we have 6 chairs left, and the 6 chairs we can arrange however we want. So 6 factorial, and we have to divide by the total. And what's the total number of arrangements in this case? In this case, we know we have a sub 1 right here. So we have 8 factorial ways of filling in the remaining chairs. So there's 8 factorial ways. So we divide that by 8 factorial. How about the next one? All A's and all B's. Well, once again, there are 3 ways of picking how to put the group of A's. One like this, one like this, and the other one like this. So we have 3 choices. So 3 choices there. And after making one of those choices, we are going to have 6 chairs left for B, and we can put B's like this, like this, like this, or like this. So we have 4 different choices, 1, 2, 3, 4. So 4 different choices on how to put B's, and within the group of A's, we have to pick this spot for A sub 2 and A sub 3. Within the group for B, we have to arrange them, so 3 factorial. And we have another 3 left to arrange, so another 3 factorial, and the total is still going to be 8 factorial. And what's the final one? We have all A's and all B's and all C's. Well, that's pretty easy to do. We pick our spot for A's as usual, so there's 3 different ways. And once we pick that, we have 2 more consecutive spots left on our table. So we can either have all B's on this side and all C's on this side, or we can have all C's on this side and all B's on this side. So we have two different choices, so 3 times 2, and we arrange within A, we arrange within B, we arrange within C, divide by the total, and we are done. So let's see what this is. Let's see what this gets us. Well, I'm just going to bring 8 factorial out. So 8 times, 7 times, 6 times, 5 times, 4 times, 3 times, 2 times 1. And for the first one, we have 3 times, 3 times, 2 times, 6 factorial, minus 3 times, 3 times, 4 times, 2 times, 3 factorial times 3 factorial. I'm just copying this. Don't forget the 3. And finally, we have this, which is plus 3 times, 2 times, 2 times, 3 factorial times 3 factorial, and we just have to simplify this. If you divide the top and bottom by 6, so let's simplify this, 6 factorial becomes 5 factorial, and the 3 factorial is 6, that's going to go away, and we can divide by another 6 to make this go away, and uh, another 6 go away, another 6 go away, and let's try dividing by 4 as well. So 5 factorial divided by 4, that's going to get us 5 times 3 times 2, and 4 goes away, 4 goes away. So what do we have at the end? We have 3 times 5 times 3 times 2, which is 10 times 9, or 90, minus 3 times 3 times 2, also known as 18, plus 3. 
all divided by 8 times 7 times 5, 8 times 5 is 40 times 7, 280. And this is what? That's minus 15, take that away from 90, gets you 75 over 280, also known as 15 over 56. So we have a 15 over 56 as the probability that we do not want. So our final answer is 1 minus 15 over 56, also known as 41 over 56. So let's go back up. So we know 41 over 56 is our answer. So m plus n is 97.